All right, so day two, we are doing lab equipment for forensics. Again, it's in case we ever get you guys in the lab, I want you to see this stuff. It's also just good knowledge for any science course. So um, going along with your notes, um, please try to, I'm going to actually put me up here. Um, please try to write stuff down as you go. It will help you on the worksheet, which is in the form of a quiz, but it's a worksheet. Um, try and get them all correct. Write this stuff down. So also on, on the notes part, there's one through 21. If we don't hit 21, don't worry. When this is the end of the slide, that's the end of the slide. That's the end of the notes. Um, you can most definitely use your notes for the, um, the worksheet and I highly suggest you do. Okay. Oh, pardon me. So this is a beaker. I hope you have seen this at least once. Um, any of you who took earth science last year, you did see the bur <laughs> the beakers. Um, they typically hold substances like we had water in them, or we actually used some of them um, for other purposes last year. Can be used to measure, that's what these are right here, and can be used to heat. We did not heat them. I'm not sure what you did in living environment. Um, if you've had chemistry, you may have heated in beakers before. All right, so now you have this right here, a test tube. It holds substances. Typically, I I've seen some that have the measuring on it, a lot of the times I don't. No biggie, they come either way. Then you've got a microscope. Okay, so what is the microscope's purpose? It is to magnify objects too small to see with the naked eye. Um, I'm assuming you guys maybe have looked at like onion cells or plant cells for living environment, so that's where magnifying glasses come in. Um, forensics, we're going to get into it, but I know they use them for paint chips. Um, I actually got to, uh, have like a little lab when I was in college and, um, they had us analyzing paint chips to figure out what the original color of, um, whatever it was that was hit, um, what it was hit by because it left trace, um, amounts of paint so we got to look at the different layers of paint latex gloves um they protect your hands i don't know if you we did not use them last year but in labs yes you can use gloves uh typically with forensics you do want to use gloves that way you are not contaminating the seat with your little fingerprints or anything like um your dna that may come off your hands or whatnot you want to um, glove up. Forceps, right there. Um, again, we didn't use them last year in earth science, but I'm sure you use forceps in a uh, living environment or maybe even um, in chemistry. They uh, help to grab small objects. Um, I've used forceps when I was in high school doing dissections. So there's that. A thermometer, it measures temperature. They can be in Celsius, they can be in Fahrenheit. Um, typically you won't see one in Kelvin, but you have the um, the numbers on the side to be able to measure. And you usually see the red liquid inside. You don't see mercury anyway anymore because yeah, it's dangerous, so no more mercury. Okay, a pipette. I <laughs> know well, this isn't the best picture, but pipettes. Um, they transfer small amounts of liquids. There's a lot of um, plastic pipettes, and I actually happen to have one on hand. I didn't even think about this beforehand. So a lot of the ones you might see in school, they look like this. They're just plastic pipettes. They do have a couple milliliters. I don't know if you can see it too well, but they are labeled those plastic pipettes you can see in a lab um and then you have a test tube rack rack well what's its purpose it holds test tubes so say you want to compare a couple different um substances 
side by side in test tubes, you can do that and it holds them up so it doesn't spill. Another good thing that test tube bricks do is if you were to flip the test tubes over, they can dry uh, test tubes. I know I did that when I was teaching chemistry. Um, test tube bricks. All right, what are these things? These ugly, horrible things that everybody hates to wear because they do not do not look appealing at all. They are safety goggles. They protect your eyes from splashback and stuff like that. Very important, you always wear safety goggles in labs. A magnifying glass. Well, its purpose, it magnifies objects. And a Petri dish used to culture microorganisms and cells. Um, I did have Petri dishes last year. I had the, um, to do the ellipses, I had a little piece of string and I had the, uh, the tacks in Petri dishes. In living environment, I know Mr. McShamus, he actually had um, cultures growing for certain students who did um, a uh, science, uh, science fair lab with washing your hands and soaps. Microscope slides. They hold the specimen while viewing under microscopes. Typically, you have the, the cover for the slide, which you slide onto it carefully to not get any bubbles, because, yeah. All right. A cover slip, that's what I was just talking about right there. So you take these cover slips and you put them in the middle and they protect the specimen while viewing under the microscope. Because sometimes I don't know if you did it. I know I've done it. <laughs> Not a good thing. When I went, I kept going down and it actually pushed against the slide. And I got warned, don't push too hard because you can possibly break the slide and that's not cool. So yeah, broken glass, not a good idea. Um, a probe, a dissecting probe. Um, these are used to move and separate pin specimens during dissection. So you uh, use it to move stuff around instead of like sticking your finger in there and moving stuff around with your finger. You use this, it um, keeps uh, any possible evidence intact so you're not like pushing around and doing stuff you shouldn't. A graduated cylinder. It measures liquids. So you put liquids in it and it measures it up. Um, so right now, this is the end of the lab equipment uh, notes. You guys make sure you use your notes for the quiz. And I hope you have a great day.